So you've been an educator through the rise of the smartphone, and my question basically relates to procrastination and task delay, needless task delay specifically. And given the unprecedented level of distraction that we have in today's world, I just wanted to get your perspective from a psychological standpoint on other than cleaning your damn room, what would you suggest to a student who's looking to overcome these things? Well, I think with any, let's call it addictive process, I mean, email is powerfully addictive, right? Partly, it's, it's a slot machine, and, and I mean that technically. So when you pull, it's, that's a variable ratio reinforcement schedule, if I remember correctly. And it's very addictive because if you pull on the slot machine arm enough, you will win. And you never know which pull will reward you. And so not only is that addictive, it's very hard to extinguish that. And so emails like that because there's always something beckoning and now and then it's a jackpot. And social media is like that because, you know, people are posting interesting things. And so, well, how do you overcome an addictive process? And partly, you do it by replacing it with something better. Right? So, when people study drug and alcohol use, they, they often make an elementary mistake, which is to try to figure out why people use drugs and alcohol. That's, that's not a smart thing to wonder. We know why people use cocaine. Cocaine directly stimulates the systems that produce positive emotion. It's like, so there's no mystery there. The mystery with cocaine is very, very simple. Why don't people take cocaine all the time until they die? That's the mystery, really. Because you can get isolated rats to do that. So, and, and for some people, alcohol has the same kind of effect, except it's mediated by opiates. But often what people have to do to get themselves out of an addictive process is to find something better to do to replace it. And so I would say, the problem with the gadgets, and I mean, they're amazing things, is that they interfere with, they approximately interfere with medium to long-term goals, I would say. And so I think the first thing you have to do to bring them under control is figure out what it is that their use is interfering with. It has to be something important. So you think, well, I, I, I want to do something important. Well, what is that? Well, it could be personal. Maybe you want to have a relationship. You want to get married. You, you want to have kids. You want to have a career that's meaningful. You know, you want to have a life. You, you want to have an Abrahamic adventure and be the father of nations, let's say. Well, you can't be ratting away on your cell phone and doing that. And so I think, I think part of it is to set your sights high and, and make a plan and figure out who you could be and see if obsessive utilization of smartphone fits into that vision of nobility. And it will partly, because they're, they're unbelievably powerful communication devices. But so, so often it's, it's for lack of something better to do. And it also interferes. So that's about the best I can do with that.